You want to make more sales, but you don't have any leads to go meet today. Hi, I'm Diogo Marques, and today I'm going to share with you the three main ways for you to get more leads. The first tip that I got for you is thinking big. This is the main purpose of your life as a life insurance agent. You want to be thinking big. And what I mean big is like 100 billion in life insurance premiums that you are going to do. This is how, how big you need to think about. Now, saying this is one thing. Getting this into practice is a completely different ballpark. So this is what you need to do. You are going to subdivide your main goal in phases. This is what I call the phases approach. And what I mean by this is that you're gonna do 500K, then you're gonna do 1 million, then five, then 10, then 20, then 50, and 100, and 1 billion, and 10, and so on. This is how you need to think about things. When you get to one step, then you think about moving to the other one. What doesn't work is just saying, I wanna do 100 billion today. That's unlikely. But what is likely to happen is you focusing your efforts on achieving a step that you can do given your current resources. So you need to be thinking big, but at the same time, you need to narrow it down to something that you can actually achieve today. Not tomorrow, not next month, I mean actually today. You go meet someone and he's going to pay you, let's say 10K in life insurance premiums, that type of person. Okay, so you need to be thinking big, but at the same time, you need to subdivide your larger plan of life, overall scheme of things into an actionable plan, something that you can actually perform today. And when you are performing, and this is really important, you need to realize that you are going to do a trial and error process. And what I mean by this is, let's take a, a good example would be Ben Feldman, the, the most successful life insurance salesperson of all time. In his lifetime, he wrote 1.5 billion in life insurance premiums. And he did about 10 to 15 calls every day. And when I mean calls was like face-to-face -face meetings. And he wrote four applications a week. And his habits didn't change when later on he was writing a larger amount of a premium. The only thing that changed was just the amount, but he had the same type of schedule every single day. So this is a good example for you to, to use in your life as an insurance per person because you are doing the same type of activities every single day. The only difference is that you are developing a relationship with that people and now the, the life insurance policies are getting larger. That's the only difference. So what you need to realize first is what is it that you want? What's your main objective? Then you're going to subdivide it into small chunks and then into an actionable plan related to some of the most successful people in the industry. And what they did was between 10 and 15 calls every single day and they wrote four applications. So given your main goal, like your first phase one approach of your overall scheme of things, let's say phase one is 1.5 million, for instance, you're going to subdivide that into months and then weeks. So every day you're going to do a, between 10 to 15 appointments and every week you're going to narrow it down to four to five applications. The second tip that I got for you is prospecting. And what I mean by this is that you need to narrow down to the people that can actually pay the need, the need of that life insurance premium that you are going to deliver. And what I mean by this is if your main goal is to write, let's say, 40K in life insurance premiums every single week, but you are dealing with people that are broke and don't have even like 100 bucks, you are wasting your time. Ask yourself first, who is it that can actually pay this type of life insurance premium? And this is something that you need to focus on because if you are a good salesperson, if you can in fact deliver, but you don't have any leads to go meet, you're screwed because you, you, you won't be able to sell, right? So what you need to do is be really focused and understanding who is the person that can actually pay what you are going to deliver. Let's say 10K, this, is a, this would be a good example. And picking the same example from Ben Feldman, what he did was he focused on companies that were asset rich and cash poor. These were typically mom and pop shops 
So they had like a son maybe or a son and daughter, something like that. Mother and father were around 40 to 50. So they are going to, they were in, they were in a situation they were passing the business to the, to the son or daughter. And this is a good example because some of these people, they're actually there. And this is how I spend my day. I know their names. I know their first names. And you'll be surprised that you actually go there. And these are people that actually have like 50 to 100 employees. So this is not like that, that small of a company. You go there and you'll be surprised because the owner is there. And he'll receive you. And you're having a face-to-face -face meeting with someone that is doing between like 5 to 15 million every year. This is not like, <laughs> they already have some dimension there. And he's gonna listen if he's a problem solver. Maybe he's going to say something like, I need my finance director there and you need to be, to be taking that into consideration because the guy needs obviously some people like around him to make the decision regarding financing. But he'll pretty much look <laughs> right through you and see this is a good call to make. So this is what you need to do. When you arrive to a premium that you need your customers to be paying you, now the next thing is figuring out who are these people, where are these companies, what's his or her first name, and you just go there. Then narrow it down to a list of around 360 something companies. And actually, <laughs> out of sheer co coincidence, this is the same amount of companies that I'm going to meet. I have a list and what I did was I used Google Maps and I ordered each company by kilometer. So what that, what that means is when I'm doing 10 to 15 calls every single day, it's like do the first one, then you move on to the next one and you already have the whole thing optimized in like in miles uh, separations. So here we use kilometers. So that way you are using your gas, <laughs> gas in your car like more effectively because you are doing one to the other one to the other one in the, in the shortest uh, time span possible. So this is what you need to do is you need to be in front of the decision maker, the person that can make a split decision on you and make a call to go ahead with the thing. And they have to have the financial wherewithal to move ahead. And this is something that you need to spend some time with. So what I would suggest for you to do is focus on companies that are not too large at this point because there's a board, there's a corporate structure there, there's a bunch of stuff there you don't need right now. But they are not that small that they can't write this type amount of premium. So if this is the case, obviously where if you are looking at uh, larger cases, obviously there was, these would be larger companies. But if you are looking at smaller cases like 10 to 20K per year per company, this is what you need to do. And this has been working for me. Out of 10 companies that I go visit every single day, pretty much out of seven or eight people, I'm in front of the decision maker. And this is a cold call like door to door situation. I just go there and I ask for the owner. And I don't say the owner, I say John, Susan, Mary. If you get an employee, right, and you look yourself as a figure of authority, you have good grooming, you're showing yourself as a person that I'm here on a, an appointment, don't waste my time, you will go call them. It's unbelievable, but it, it, this does work and it has been working for me, it worked for Ben Feldman, so it, it will work for you too. So remember to narrow it down to the list of people that you need to meet that have the financial wherewithal to buy this type of life insurance premiums and you'll be all set. All you need to do is move on to the third tip. The third tip that I got for you is, now you're in front of the people that can make a split decision on you, but you didn't, it didn't screw up in everything that you're saying. You miss the sale. And this is something that you need to practice every day. You need to practice closing, you need to practice sales, you need to practice your presentations, you need to practice rebuttal so when they say something like, I need to think about it, I need to speak with the unavailable party, you will know what to say. So this is what I have for you. Understand that you are in front of someone that does have the financial wherewithal, but you need to present your case in a way that looks as a better solution for them. But you can't do this unless you practice it before and you know your case heart to heart and you make a solid bulletproof case when you're in front of them, then they will move on with you. So these were the three tips that I got for you. I hope this helps. Remember to practice this because this is the main difference between you making a sale today or not. You need to know your goal, you need to be in front of the decision maker and you need to know what to say when you're in front of them. 
I hope you enjoyed today's video. Remember to subscribe, share, and click that notification button below so you can get notified every time that I make new videos like this. Peace. Whoa.